And now, from the dark corners of the internet, where exploits run wild, packets aren't the only things getting sniffed, and the cocktails flow steady, it's Paul's Security Weekly! This podcast is sponsored by Palo Alto Networks, creators of the Next Generation Firewalls, helping you enforce network security policies based on applications, users, and content. Visit them on the web at paloaltonetworks.com. And by the SANS Institute, the most trusted source for computer security training, certification, and research. Visit sans.org to learn more. And by Tenable Network Security, the creators of Nessus, the world's best vulnerability scanner. Check out the new Nessus Enterprise and Nessus Enterprise Cloud. Engage your IT department in the vulnerability management process today. And by Black Squirrel, pen test networks from your browser. Exploit the limits of network security through just a browser. Have a Chrome exploit in your toolkit? Good. But for the rest of us, there's Black Squirrel. Visit blacksquirrel.io for more information. It's time to fire up a packet capture, pour yourself a frosty beverage, and give the intern control of your botnet, because here's your host. He's the man who's currently testing the Security Weekly branded sex toys. Hey, uh, can you pass him a tissue? Paul Asadorian! Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Paul's Security Weekly. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian. I have <coughs> an illustrious panel. I like to use that word illustrious when I introduce the panel. For the podcast, I'm not sure why, but maybe because you're all illustrious. I'll start with directly to my right, Mr. Jeff Mann is here with us. Jeff, welcome to the show. Thanks, Paul. Jeff and I are co-workers at Tenable. We are. We've done Tenable yeah. podcasts before. You've never been on Security Weekly before, I've right? Not. This is my first Security we Weekly. Popping your cherry tonight on Security Weekly. It's fantastic. Thanks. <coughs> Jeff is uh, an expert in PCI, but promises not to talk about PCI. Well, he promised not Only to say. Fast. Drink. <laughs> he promised not to say PCI, which is different from talking drink. about. Drink. It. I would, but <laughs> all I could do was eat my lemon. <laughs> Told you that and was going to happen. And it's not even lemon; it's just the rind. I know you could squeeze it till the juice ran down your leg. But Jack Daniel is here in the studio. <laughs> Welcome, Jack. Thank you very much. Yes, I uh, looked at the empty glasses and thought about filling them again, and, and then I thought again and didn't. <laughs> that would be <laughs> time we, to, we time have to We have, two, have had uh, two rounds, a, uh, a, a Manhattan-like uh, thing and a Sazerac, so I don't know the where we're Sazerac, going. The Sazerac, I tell you, was very good. The real uh, – having absinthe, Ab- absinthe, absinthe, uh, absinthe is liqueur. Is and it's absinthe liqueur. Yeah, well, it's absinthe, which is yeah. almost absinthe. Right. Uh, and it's not – Eighty-five dollars a bottle, and it came with a really cool. Spoon. It comes with an absinthe spoon. So yeah. sometime when maybe for episode four hundred, we'll I'll do proper absinthe and so do the. Do we heat it up on the spoon and then inject it? No, Is it's it's oh. no. You, uh, <laughs> you put a sugar cube on that spoon. Uh, you're, you're so you put iced yes, absinthe on. I googled on it. Yeah, and yeah. And <laughs> then. <laughs> and then you get a YouTube video. It was a YouTube yeah, video. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so uh, uh, whatever, yeah, right, yeah, yes. So Jack is actually pretty happy tonight. In, um, right, you know, um, in Jack happiness. Shiny. We need to have the Jack Daniel happiness meter. level. It's the Jack o yeah. yeah. Jacko meter? <laughs> Wait, the Jack no, no right. Jack o meter is something completely <laughs> that different, Larry. It's completely different. <laughs> And that's <laughs> Although not so much. <laughs> always happy. <laughs> Larry Pesci is uh, here in studio all the way down the yes. other end of the table. Yes. Feeling very distant from you right now, Larry. It's okay, but I get to see all of your shining faces. That's uh, right. I, and Jack. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Larry, Larry's still working on his cocktail. I, uh, well, because I got here late. Cause you got pulled over. I did. Right here. Fir- that's a first. And it it's really? A first. Ever? In that's nine years? In nine years. The first time I've ever been pulled over on the way to Security Weekly. I got once. I once I got into a car accident. Yep, you did on the way to the show. Yep, when we were still in uh, the secret location in downtown Providence. Was it? No, no, no. no you were. At, we were at the old house. One of my houses. The, the old house. The old house. Because uh, that was the time when Nick and I were waiting out front, and we were able to open your garage door. Yes, you hacked into my house. Yep. essentially. <laughs> yep. While I was being rear-ended in a car accident. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you qualified that. Yeah. <laughs> Where is that rank on the jackometer? Yeah. <laughs> it's not. Very nice. It mm. wasn't fun. Okay. Mm. On the lines via Skype, <coughs> we've got Mr. Carlos Perez sporting his new microphone. Hey, Paul. Happy to be here. Yes, you sound fantastic, Carlos. Oh, thanks. That means that the money was 
well spent. That's right. <laughs> it's, you know, the more money you spend, the better you'll sound, is what people tell me. So, uh, we can't see you though, but that's. No, you sad. don't want to see me. I haven't shaved in two weeks. Oh no, we so want to see that. No, we want to see that. Are you growing a beard? <laughs> Carlos, November was yeah, last. That month, was last Carlos. month. No, yeah. no, no. Just you're just working from home. One of the uh, side effects of working from home. If it weren't for this show, <laughs> I probably would never <laughs> shave either. <laughs> I, I I know what you mean. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, wow. It wouldn't look like that, though. <laughs> it would be nothing like that. Uh, Joff Dyer is on the line. Welcome, yes, Joff. I, yes, I am. G'day, everybody. How are you? And uh, good to see everybody's shining, happy faces. I was just observing just how festive Jack looks this evening. Rather like Father Christmas there and his... Uh, Nice red top. Yes, very nice. Jack's I can't see bar. the words there, Jack. It says <laughs> Jack's bar across my chest. Ah, and be- beautiful, beautiful. And, uh, you know, absence makes the uh, heart grow fonder or something like that, right? Something like that. You were like talking that. about drinks, but anyway. Yeah, uh, it's good to be here. Absinthe makes the heart grow fonder as well. It yeah. makes what grow? Um, so, <laughs> Joff, I can't see you either. Is you that- cannot? Well, no, the camera's I on. I can't uh, see you. I don't you. know. I, still, I see me. Well... I'm appreciating What, what that. else do you need? You That's know? true. That's true. Hold on. I'm just going to admire. Well, I got some announcements while we try and get Joff on the video. Um, is the SteelCon thing still going on? Does anyone know? We're a little behind on our announcements. Here, let me click the link. I'm clicking it now. <clears throat> oh. It looks like you it. Mean, you mean that phishing link I sent you? Sorry about that. Oops. Yeah, you know, if you wanted my porn, Joff, you could just ask. <laughs> Larry's teaching you SANS 617 Wireless Ethical Hacking and Defense coming up Orlando April 11th through the 18th and in Berlin, Germany, June 22nd through the 27th. Yep, and I think there's another one coming up in there too that they haven't announced yet. Awesome. (coughs) Awesome. It'll be a good time. I wanted to mention to everyone, shop.securityweekly.com. That's right. We've got all new... Hack naked T-shirt designs. Can someone get me with some of the the T-shirts that we've got over there? Um, you can you can just you can walk. Oh, there you go. We can go around. We made a little path so we don't have to walk in front of the cameras. We're like, how about? Can you get one of the new ladies ones, yeah, Aaron? Get the Thank ladies you. one. Yeah, we want to see the the ladies ones. It, it doesn't one of now, each. Is now, fine. Did, whatever. Did the the hack naked guy get printed on men's shirts? No. No. What? No. Oh, all right. You, you've got to. If you only work out do to for everybody. the trials and tribulations of getting these T-shirts printed, Larry. Oh, I bet. I'll send you uh, the email I, chain someday. I bet. If you want to shoot yourself. Yes, that is the new ladies hack naked shirt with the guy on it in the cowboy hat. Now, what's so different about that cut of a shirt? Uh, it's a ladies cut shirt. Yeah, but what's yeah, put it on and see. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it'll become That's clear to you I just, very I, we, quickly. We, Larry and I have uh, worn worn worse. Yeah. I, I get, what size is this? Guys yeah, tend no to bulge in not. different places. Uh, there's, there's the longitudes than you yeah. wanna, For all the women, ladies in your life, oh. you want to buy them a hack naked shirt. They are four. So, oh, we got the red one with the black. Thanks, Aaron. Oh, I suck. Do we have any 4XL ladies that might fit me? No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have three XL men's. <laughs> this is the red sh- shirt with the black text, which we've never printed before. This is the first printing. So nice. if you're looking to refresh or update your hack naked shirt, this is the one that I recommend as it's slightly different from the rest. Thanks, Aaron. So, chop.securityweekly.com. There's no – I'll tell you what. The next week, we'll put a discount code out on social media. So make sure that you follow me on Twitter, at Science Security Weekly. Follow our Facebook page. You can follow me on LinkedIn, Google+, some type of social media. If you follow us, I will put a discount code out on social media. You should, follow, you should just follow all of us on social media. Follow all, Well, if you all retweet my tweet about the discount code, mm-hmm. you can follow any single one of us. On yep. social media and get that discount code. So you bet. Social media time. I don't have an Instagram account for this show though. <laughs> dude. Oh, now Paul, I didn't. Dude, see. dude you right? skip the is Instagram. Go right to Tumblr. Is Tumblr? there a ladies' version of the red and black? There is not. Sure. Oh, there is not. Okay. There is not. Well, that's a shame. Sorry. If you wanna send us email and request which one you you want to get, and we'll we'll take it to a vote or something. 
Anyway. Alrighty. Do we we don't have a guest? No guest. Okay. Well then, I say that we start talking about stories for this week. Nice. Well, let's talk about Sony. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about Sony. I mean, yeah. Jack's that's an interesting one, elephant, especially when Politico went, oh, it was North Korea. <laughs> but then I heard it's not North. Some people say it's not North Korea. It's, uh, it's North Korea and it is a, they it's, made it's a blunder. Schrodinger's attacker, like the cat. It's, we don't know. I don't know. My, I'm sticking with my tweet from earlier this week, which was, Sony, we don't need pen tests because we've been reduced to using pencils. <laughs> wow. That's a good one. <laughs> and they were. I mean, they, they were owned so thoroughly that they were reduced to pen Sent and paper. Sent people home. Sent people home. It was like a 90s... Just hacker movie graphic. It, yeah, skulls, on skulls, skulls on. Can we get a picture of that up on the video? <coughs> at some point, that would be awesome. I, I'd like people. I mean, you probably saw it anyway. But that was so nineties. It was very nineties. So it was yeah. It was like movie nineties. I thought Larry was linking yeah, I, me. I, I, <laughs> the most interesting part that is not the image that was on their desktops, Larry. <laughs> 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 no, but I. Uh, I oh my! <laughs> I, w- I was searching for the thing that I said that uh, was make made me think of you the other day, and that came up, and I'm like, oh, I gotta send this to him too. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, they had printed Enjoy notices that. stuck up. Please do not log on to your PC equipment or company Wi-Fi until further notice. That's pretty bad. Yeah. No one saw that. That's good. Has any of you checked the torrent that? was leaked out with all of their movies that have not hit the, Has anybody uh, downloaded yet? the movies yet? Mm. I, I have not. Um, I'm no, sure there's armies of lawyers things. ready to go after yeah. people on so that one. That, <laughs> and that was some of the other stuff that I heard that they apparently had BitTorrent servers running on their network hosting their own movies. Like, oh, wow. what? Yes, really? that was what I heard. That was one of the things that I stumbled across. But uh, they said basically that they were, during the cleanup disco- and discovery, they found that there were BitTorrent servers with some ridiculous amount of Sony movies being distributed from BitTorrent servers on their network. Were they complete? Because one of the things that, that Sony does, oh, yeah. I- and one of the things that, that content owners do, is put uh, damaged or partial uh, partial in, partials to, up. Yeah. And supposedly they're doing that to minimize the number of people who get a full download of the dump because oh. supposedly you know and, and so they've been attacked and they have int- intellectual property online and so they're using DMCA takedown notices and every tool in their arsenal that they've learned from fighting piracy to get as much of that content down as possible obviously it's it's on the internet it's on the internet forever yep. uh, but they are trying their best to make it hard to get uh, all of the information, but they are, um, they're, they're, uh, what's the word, screwed? Yeah. Yeah. Wh- one of the interesting parts was when you start looking at the dump of data from them is that the hackers actually went after their SSL keys, their SSL private keys are included in the dump for all of their servers and uh, their certificate chain also, part, part of their certificate chains was also in the dump. So they got owned very, 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 very seriously. I mean, to have an image come up on as all their desktop backgrounds is that? I mean, that's like so. Very they, so they, I'm assuming Active Hollywood. Directory was owned inside out, upside down, and they pushed the image out to which is now is. up on the is screen. That, that's yeah, that's not, the one. There it is. Yeah. It's sort of the one. And so we have yeah, we've, yeah, that's the see. one. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, yeah, you know, so there's like a, a skull skeleton and, then, and the skeleton reaching out from you. It, yeah. it's. You know, so, so obviously the compromise was fairly complete. And, and they, you know, the green text with the black background is a nice touch. I think that's yeah, nice. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's Absolutely. old school stuff. But uh, they were they were owned. And there are a couple of interesting things. People have said a bunch of things about Sony. One of the things to remember is that when we say Sony as if it's a monolith, it is not. It's it's a oh, couple far dozen. From. It's a couple dozen different companies. Uh, it... Uh, you know, it's a company that's sued itself over, you know, different divisions have sued each other over um, copyright, copyright back in, you know, Betamax day, you know, those sort of things. So they've, it is not uh, like they can hire a, a CSO 
and push down something that, that filters down through all the companies. Uh, but uh, they've got a mess, and they're trying to clean it up, and it's the extent of this compromise is, is really stunning, and it's somebody that's just out to uh, – I mean, they're just no, raking over I, the coals. It'll be I interesting wonder, to how, see. How many yeah, people actually plan for a compromise of this scale? Like, many people just go, okay, let's plan for a compromise. What data can be stolen? What data can be leaked? How are we going to handle the PR on it? But very few people actually think, like, what would happen in, if thousands of our desktops all of a sudden were completely disabled and all data was lost? There's... I, I cannot even fathom how you would plan for that. You know, I, th I think they, they've got to, in a situation like that, move into a full-blown disaster recovery kind of um, space. I mean, it's way beyond just a security incident, right? I mean, you're into it. it, it I think companies must right, and, and look at it as if it was a natural disaster. Uh, you know, it, it is a complete implosion, right? Uh I mean, that's just my thought on the matter because, you know, you, you're, in, you're in the space of just shutting everything down, right? We're done until we finish fully investigating what, what's actually happened here because it's that bad. It's interesting. A few, a few folks have commented on this being new and unique in its destructiveness, and those would be people who have smoked too much weed and have less memory than I do because – it was only a few years ago that Saudi Aramco had to uh, rebuild um, tens of thousands of machines after being destroyed. And those of us that have been doing this for any length of time remember, you know, back into the 90s, uh, you know, what was the first widespread Internet worm? The Morris worm actually was destructed. <coughs> and that's a long time ago. So the people that uh, pay no attention to this and are now reporting on it like they usually do are doing it poorly. Uh, but it's still serious. But I mean, talking about how you prepare for it, the only uh, the only similar story that I can think of is is the Saudi Aramco attack that um, that did this at at a stunning scale. Although the South Korean banking one, which was also allegedly blamed on the North Koreans, or was blamed on the North Koreans, but you know who knows who was actually at fault. Um, so who who knows? But it's it's certainly not a new idea. But at this scale, for a company like that, with their money, uh, I think that this uh, has got to have a few people wondering how prepared they are, and um, more than a few resumes being updated and pushed wow. out. <laughs> I, I, I oh, yeah. bet you the the reborn company is going to get real serious about security, or at least they should <laughs> well, for a little while. In yep. fact, I have a buddy who actually works there in security, and I ha I haven't had the courage to give him a call. <laughs> he I, may not be answering yet. Yeah, he's, prob I, he's probably not sleeping yet. Uh, yeah. A lot of us know somebody that's at a very different Sony division who's got a, a important security role, and yep. I'm sure he's they've reached across the the boundaries to reach out to that gentleman and weep. Uh, Help me. Um, yeah. Then again, my buddy works in the uh, PlayStation side. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's who uh, we're I thinking of. I think that wasn't effective in this. Right, that was not. But if you had him even on a different company with the same name, you'd pick up the phone and call him, wouldn't you? I sure as hell would. So. Oh, yeah. Does anyone know how the initial attack mm -hmm. took place or how exactly how long they were inside the network? Well, so the, the rumor is that it was partially an inside job. No, oh, interesting. That would make sense. To see the extent of it, yeah. H hence why people are <laughs> rushing off their resumes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it, it's it that's the most consistent story is that it's there's some component of inside-ness to it. Um and it looks like it's been going on for a while, but uh, we don't know a lot yet other than what people have figured out by looking at the data dump and it takes a while to wade through 11 terabytes of, right? Well, I mean, <laughs> <coughs> if it wasn't and, and believe me, people are doing it nonstop, and every every now and then something pops up in IM or something. It's like, oh, I'm like, ah, oh, man. But saying it's an insider is is up there on the same level of blaming it on North Korea. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, what, so was it was it an intentionally malicious insider? It was a North Korean insider. You there know, you you, was it somebody who was fed up and? Did something that opened a door? Was it somebody that was actively recruited? Was it, 
you know, it was a long-term plan that somebody, you know, they, they flipped somebody in college and got them into the company and they've been there for seven years. You know, we don't know. That, that last one seems a little far-fetched for Sony. Uh, but the idea that, um, you know, what does insider threat mean? You know, because half the time when people talk about insider threat, they're talking about inadvertent, you know, dumb stuff that opens a door to uh, compromise. So we don't know a lot other than uh, we're glad we're not at Sony right now. It's true. And uh, small parts of the press are covering it really well. Really small parts of the press are covering yeah. it really well. The article both you and I linked to, Paul, from Violet mm. Blue uh, is a good one. You know, somebody that understands uh, the industry well and can write well. And so her, her take on it, uh, you know, the, the, her question was, you know, is this Hollywood Snowden moment? And that's, that's kind oh, of that, interesting. Did she blog for geek.com? Uh, was that re- that was was that bounced off? No, nope, that, that's a different one. Sorry. Uh by Violet Blue, yeah. That's oh, sorry. Uh, SF so Appeal. SF Appeal. Yep. Yep. So that was that was her article. It's very well done. Um, you know, she knows what she's talking about in this space and and other spaces too. But that's a different show. Uh, yeah, the one from Politico was a complete mess. Yeah, some of them have been really, really bad. But that's you know, I mean, we're we're talking about people who uh, watch Scorpion. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Or, or may have written for Scorpio. Yeah, yeah, may have written. No, no, I don't think those people are creative enough to write for Scorpio. <laughs> well, they <laughs> fabricated some pretty good stories. Yeah, yeah. It's some uh, new uh, stories, so you never yeah. know. Uh, I've uh, not seen this series. Is is it that bad? Yes. What is Scorpion? It's it's the worst show on television. Oh, do, do tell. What's it? A, what's the It's the, the world's greatest hacker who's more of a... Fr- oh, In yeah, real life yeah. is more of a fraud than... I've seen it. He who shall not be named. Um, Yeah, I I mean, it's just terrible. The steal the Ferrari and plug the Ethernet cable into the jet while it's running down the runway was just, that was brilliant. I mean, (laughs) on the Ethernet port on the outside of the plane? On the Ethernet port, because if you you pull one of the carts out from the catering station for the attendant station, you can lift a panel which will let you put a Cat 5 cable right through the landing gear wheel tub and dangle the cable down so you can grab it as you drive along under it in a Ferrari. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I I won't be seeing that. Oh, no. Now we have to watch (laughs) for entertainment value. This could be the greatest show ever on television for people like us. IT security MST3K. It is. Put up on a big screen, film from behind. It's where we sit on a sofa. <laughs> yes. It's yes. Unbelievably bad. Mystery Science Theater 3000. And, it, and the guy that it's supposedly based on is a complete con artist and, and not a good one. And it's it turns out he's he's um, I don't want to say he's full of shit, but he'd, he'd he be substantial. He'd be substantially smaller if someone gave him X lax. <laughs> wow. Wow. <sighs> Alrighty then. Alrighty then. <laughs> so, did anything else happen? I was just getting a visual on that one, Jack. It's not, not pretty. <laughs> oh, here's some breaking news: critical remote code execution flaw found in a WordPress plugin. <laughs> Get <laughs> out! You heard it here for the nine million nine hundred seventy-fifth time. There are vulnerable WordPress plugins. No. When did this happen? Oh, Freaking WordPress. To, to it's it, it, it's it not even WordPress. It's people week, that write week before, uh, week before that. Week before <laughs> that. So, Paul, to quote back, uh, to go back to the quote, I think maybe we said the first time we talked about this. The re- internet is ruined for me now. It so <laughs> is. I probably <laughs> said that on episode five. Word, <laughs> I mean, word, Jesus. WordPress, yeah, uh, is just horrible. No, just the <laughs> plugins. No, WordPress itself too <laughs> is horrible, yeah. and the. I, I I was I was amazed by the lack of um, auditable trail when we were looking at WordPress. Uh, Paul, you remember um, in, in the uh, when Security Weekly server got uh, compromised. It, it, it was it's horrible. I mean, there was nothing to to look at. I mean, in terms of login, audit information, log out, any of the activity, there was it's just nothing there. And I I was just uh, surprised a software product could exist with that little, uh, you know, logging. It. Yeah, it just 
the whole <coughs> the whole structure for WordPress plugins needs to be revisited. Yeah, for sure. There's a fundamental architecture sort of problem there. Yeah, there is. I don't know how we fix that, Joff. I mean, I've installed WordPress plugins. I've hacked WordPress and WordPress plugins. I, I've never really sat down and thought about the the solutions are really like add more plugins. It's kind of like the antivirus software <laughs> approach. Like there's a problem a or on a it. patch, right? Like you were talking last week, Jack, like there's a problem. So we'll add more plugins. Well, my WordPress <laughs> is kind of bad security architecture and plugins are bad security architecture. So I'll just add security architecture. Plugins. Add, co add complexity to solve problems introduced yeah. by poor code and complexity. Yes. Brilliant. Brilliant. What could possibly go Brilliant. wrong with that? Right? This is, yeah, this yeah. could, um, you know, what do you do? Burn, make an image of your uh, of, of your platform, lose your interactivity, burn it to a DVD, and and just reboot the DVD the box and pull the image off the DVD every fifteen seconds or something. You know, <laughs> Re write it to uh, read only some read only media and uh, re reinitiate the that web service uh, every few seconds um the problem is you're still vulnerable to whatever oday is out there for wordpress right well that's why that's why you bounce it you know every couple of seconds we notice security <coughs> we notice security events and we're like read later on oh there's a wordpress oday and like start comparing notes oh those security events make sense now <laughs> crap yeah that's how that's where we're at with it's just I don't know what to do. Hooray! Uh, if people have people have sent in suggestions about securing WordPress, we've implemented most of them. If you have more, definitely do tell. As uh, do tell. Or you should, it, it, you know, you should just run it on something that's inherently secure, like a SharePoint. <laughs> How to secure WordPress? <laughs> RF space. Yes. <laughs> RM. Oh, sorry, RM. RM, da, RM space dash RF. Run <laughs> Drupal. Oh. oh, no, wait, hold on. Oh. No. Run, mo run movable type. <laughs> oh, no, wait, hold on. Oh, yeah. Run cold fusion? No. What's the uh, other horrible? Paul, has anybody uh, What's got the a uh, nice consolidated blog entry on those suggestions? It might be something that we could maybe get on the internal blog. We should probably work on that, Joff. Absolutely. Yeah. It would be nice as... because it would be a good community service. At least we can try to um, you know, promote what what you can do uh, from a positive perspective rather I mean we can all laugh about it but at least we you got to recognize that people use these CMSs and yep. and you know they, if they got to use them then at least we can tell you here's the best things you can do from our collective knowledge and um, you know God bless you after that sort of thing <laughs> yep um, well, was I was gonna say something and now it's gone Oh, and, well, and also I'd like to recommend other some other sites that I visit to do performance tuning on their WordPress instances. Because, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I typically just recommend WP Scan. Um, yep, we I run that one. we had the author in, in the podcast before. Yep, we did. Yep, that is a useful one. I mean, again, that's it's kind of like a, well, it is a vulnerability scanner for WordPress. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that that's a useful little tool. I've, I I use is. that one uh, in in, in some of my assessments, and it's it's got some value. So I would uh, certainly give it a run. And I'm shocked and horrified that TCP dump has multiple security vulnerabilities. No way. Well, because <laughs> I it's because I when we teach people things and they're all like Wireshark, and I'm like, no, TCP dump. Like, start with the command line version, you know. And then maybe go use Wireshark, um, but uh, the uh, pre-processor, post-processors for Wireshark, I always have security issues. Uh, that's why I like I like TCP dump uh, to do that. But it too has security problems. Ooh, and this one is for for the Debian security update too. Well, you know, I guess everything has security issues, especially when we come to open source. Well, you, you know, Especially it doesn't, lately, it doesn't surprise that? me that TCB Dump has them, I, it, but it also doesn't surprise me that people haven't looked too closely. And actually, I think it's something that goes on in our industry. We use a lot of our tools, and we tend not to look too closely at our actual tools. Yep. Um, 
we tend to take them for granted and just use them, um, but I think we should be examining them a little closer. I think TCP uh, dump is certainly a, pretty, a standard for yeah, me. I, I mean, right, I use Jack. it all the time. Thank you, Jack. Right, Jack. I examine what? Jam, I, was just, I was just saying I think you examine your tool pretty closely. <laughs> yes. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Way too often. <laughs> he, massage, uh, he massages the output of his tool pretty frequently. Yes. Yes. You do it lots of, yes. Uh, He's so got lots my, of meetings. So th the thing about the these open source projects like this year has been the year of SSL and TLS stacks because somebody found something in one and then a bunch of people said hey I wonder if the rest of them are this much shit and the answer was yes, yes. <laughs> it was a resounding yeah. yes right so big time terrifying things I'm, I'm not I'm not a big fan of end of year predictions but let's just say after uh, MS 14068 I would not be surprised if next year we find more uh creative uses of poor implementation of Kerberos in different systems. Mm -hmm. yeah. so how, how often has that been looked at? You know, because people start looking at these. It's like the, the various UDP protocols used for reflective attacks. You know, like DNS started to fade. So we'll use SNMP. We'll use NTP, right? So you, once, once somebody finds one of these threads, you tend <coughs> to uh, have it pulled hard. And mm -hmm. uh, if it's like the SSL TLS mess of this year... <laughs> Uh, you're unraveling. In fact, yeah. didn't a lot of people have been already complaining about Kerberos and Windows? You have the, um, oh, I forgot his name, the guy that wrote uh, Mimikatz in addition to, uh, passing the hash, obscure hack. And a bunch of other people uh, have been trolling Microsoft about, hey, this is completely broken. You don't validate a pack. You don't validate a bunch of stuff. Fix it. When are you going to fix it? Yeah, there gentle, have, gentle wiki. There have been some mm. uh, some questions and and attribution. It, it, I don't know. I don't know you, where these things come. I don't know. It's just gonna be a mess. That's it. Next year will suck. There's, there's my prediction. <sighs> yeah, but keeps well, this, us all this employed. This year has been um, quite a year. So uh, if it's gonna keep on this this level, I think it's going to be an interesting year coming up. But as Jeff, I think just said. It's good to be employed, so uh, yeah. part of me doesn't <laughs> mind. Um, but, uh, you know, I do ultimately, though, and, I, and I, I do want to reiterate this, even though I'm in the penetration testing business and, and do information security related development work, I do want to see it get better. Um, I think a lot of us in the industry, you know, we kind of get a little depressed after a while. It's like one thing after another, but we do want to see improvement. We are interested in, in getting our customers to a better place. Jack, you had uh, an article about electronic cigarettes serving malware. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's True or false? Uh, who knows? Uh, supposedly it was on Reddit, exploited so in the wild. <laughs> right, yeah. True. It's yeah. got to be true. They, ref they Electro refer Electro to Electronic cigarettes serving ma malware or idiots? Well, <laughs> you uh, the bottom line is your it's, adventure. It, if you plug it into USB. Which you do on some of them. Sooner or later, it will have malware. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Where it came from, who knows? Uh, I like how it says it started on Reddit news media website. It's how uh, they refer to Reddit. Yes, that's interesting by itself. Interesting language. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> interesting choice of words. Uh, but, yeah, some of them do charge by USB. Uh, some of them take batteries like that. Um, mm -hmm. But some do charge via USB. And if these USB devices do contain malware on them, as most of them are probably made in countries that are known for making devices with malware. Is that? Am I well, wrong I mean, there's so what they point to here is, the, yeah, there have been a variety of products that have been shipped over the years that have had malware, and you don't know where it came from because it could be, you know, somebody in the company plugged a thumb drive in to load the latest schematics or, you know, load something onto the, the manufacturing floor or take sales orders compromises the network, compromises the system, and now it replicates via USB. So you, just because it came from a, a factory in China, well, most stuff is made there, so um, intent and attribution are hard. But yeah, it's, if it has USB, perhaps you should be cautious. Um, and, and after the recent news this year where uh, you can actually reprogram a USB device depending on the chipset oh, the bad to USB do stuff. a lot of evil stuff. Yeah. And bad USB is terrifying because what is paraphrasing months of writing on it? 
Uh, it, it affects half the, half the USB devices in the world, and we don't know which half. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> we don't I mean, know which I, half. I, I, I'm, I am sort of tongue-in-cheek, but not really, because that's... Carlos, is, isn't that pretty much where we stand with bad USB? That no. <laughs> the only way to know if it's doing something evil is plug it in and see what happens. Yeah. It's, the um, idea remains the same. <laughs> Everything <laughs> there you remains have the it. Same. You, there's no way for you to know if it if it is evil or not. So the only way other to know than if a, dumping a link is bad is to click, click on it. it. Right. 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 Okay, cool. Yes. That's what we're saying, Jeff. Excellent. Oh, that's brilliant. See hey. the things you learn on Security Week? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I've always wanted to push that red button that says, don't push this. Just do it on Paul's machine. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, click the link on someone else's machine. Plug the USB device into someone else's machine. So can I, see what happens. Can I uh, <laughs> ask Joff to, to elaborate a little bit on his statement a few minutes ago? Wh- what do you think it takes to get us better and get our customers better? Well, I think we've... Uh, circled around to it on the show quite a lot of times and the place we have to keep coming back to is um, the software development um, part of the industry um, and get people to really implement security as part of their development life cycle um, and you know there are some companies notably Microsoft who have led the way and, and done a very very good job of promoting that idea we need to spread that um, that um, emphasis and spread that education and 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 push uh, in the industry because we've said before and it is a kind of a depressing thing that we will not win if um, the uh, business urge to release products quickly without including um, security in the development life cycle continues we, we just won't win because if if vulnerable code keeps coming out there I mean we're going to be employed for a long time but it's not going to make things any better because the diversity of software coming out is just ever increasing every day. So not to pick on Microsoft, but uh, you say they've done a good job. So we all trust Microsoft products now, software. Well, I mean, you you, you got to trust that. You got to think about that in terms of um, all software that you use, open source, uh, Microsoft, whichever vendor you pick. I mean, if you really get paranoid, go down to the uh, dynamic link libraries at the low end of 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 your Linux kernel in your freaking thermostat on the wall, right? I mean, do, do you really trust them? Do you really trust the coder that put together this this dynamic module that, that does what you, you don't even know what it does, right? I mean, th- there's a level of trust you have to adopt anyway in, in any product, in any kernel, right? Um, r- regardless, I, I was pointing out Microsoft because they've made, they've made great strides uh, in, in really emphasizing it. And I think they've done that because they've gotten hurt the most be having that preeminent position in the industry for so long. Um, but there are plenty of others that are getting hurt plenty today. So, you know, we need folks to really start adopting that approach. I don't disagree, but I think it's, um, I think that's only part of it. Uh, you know, we've talked about, we've alluded to, there's always going to be vulnerabilities. Uh, I've been in the security business for 30 some years and (laughs) and one of the early lessons I learned and I have a DOD background was uh, a chief scientist said to me very early on what can be created by man can be broken by man and that's basically true. Um, So I I think there there needs to be more than just simply yes you have to trust software because you're going to use it but uh, but I think more importantly maybe is uh, there needs to be awareness and education that if you're going to use stuff, know what could go wrong, know what to look for to see that something is going wrong. And and maybe the focus needs to be uh, twofold. Yes, we need to have more secure uh, apps and it gets built in early and people need to get serious about security, but there also needs to be on the, on the user end more awareness and of what, what might be going wrong, what could be going wrong or, uh, what to look for? What to you know? What what is the evidence that something is going wrong? Because you know the rumor about the going back to Sony is that the hackers were in there for a year, um, or up to a year. Um, they were obviously very good at what they were doing, but they had to have left some sort of footprint somewhere along the line. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't disagree with that either. I 
I think the, the, the development side has come out as a theme amongst us on a few shows just because we, we, we really start getting depressed when, when you just see flawed code coming out. But, but that's certainly not the complete picture. I, I, I would agree with you. I mean, that, that uh, um, we need to continue our efforts in education and, and, and especially continue kind of closing that loop of reporting incidents um, that seem abnormal and, and, and at least having some sort of team that takes that seriously and, and follows that process, right? So all the incident, proce- incident response processes and organizations are implementing and, and all the user awareness is certainly part of the picture. There's no doubt. Um, but um, it's, I think there's, there's another component that we haven't really touched upon and that is the also uh, ever-increasing trend to completely ignore the concept of privacy in our society anymore, um, and this bothers me mostly for my kids. That people have become, in some ways, more trusting of software rather than less, um, and especially in, in the era of social networking. And so that um, that issue, um, in terms of control of data uh, from an individual perspective, is is huge to me. And I think that's going to occupy a lot of time in the next bit. I would love to see some sort of mechanism come out of the IT industry in general where data data could be ascribed back to the individual and there could be some degree of control the individual could have over data. Um, but it, we're just not even close to that yet. I know I went off on all, all kinds of tangents. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, I wanted to talk about your story about the hacker-proof seal on websites. Oh, I thought that was a good one. I, I noticed that as I was going through um, it. Um, apparently, companies that uh, uh, promote these seals actually do perform some level of vulnerability analysis, at least in, in uh, some set of them anyway. Uh, but I think the story sort of highlights the idea that, that, that companies that are branding themselves with these seals uh, in some ways, are making themselves a little more attractive as a target, but also that those companies that are selling the seals are doing a, a sort of cursory, automated vulnerability analysis. And I can't authoritatively speak for all here, but um, rather than sort of an in-depth uh, penetration testing approach with the you know the appropriate uh, uh, comprehensive examination of the of the application, so it, it is a concern. Uh, for sure, and they are getting um, compromised um, regardless. So uh, it, it just piqued my interest uh, in that there seems to be um, uh, a little bit of disin- disingenuous nature of these seals uh, in some way. I, I read a comment to that blog post that I thought was interesting. And they said that for all the things uh, companies they <laughs> work for, they said that PCI requires this. <laughs> they said that PCI requires one of these. He had to I didn't PCI. bring it up. You did. I did. No, I know. I okay. did. It's a legitimate question. All right. Ask. It says the PCI requires one of these seals be on Drink. the website. False. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, it also says that these banners are hacker-proof seals. Um, <laughs> it's 97% hacker safe, Jack says. Um, <coughs> it's proven that conversion rates increase with them. I thought that was interesting. Well, yeah, I, I was going to say, I mean, most of those types of seals that I've seen in my years in the, you know, working with dozens, hu- if not hundreds of customers, they were all market driven. Yeah. Marketing driven. Marketing driven. Right. Um, you know, if we have that seal, we must be good. We can, you know, we can. Give them a credit card. Tell our hmm. customers, use us because we've got the <coughs> seal of approval. Right. Um, I, uh, you know. Many years ago, people used to look at uh, electronics and equipment and look for a certain laboratory seal of approval yes. saying that it's been tested. I don't know if we're allowed to say names here or not. Um, but it's you two letters. We're not regulated by First that. one's U, second one's L. Yeah. And I, I, I listened to a webinar given by an engineer from UL Laboratories I don't know, probably a month ago who was talking about that industry that I'm not mentioning. Uh, and... You know, some of what he said was good, but they took a lot of shortcuts and, and you know, he glossed over a lot of things too, which mm-hmm. to me uh, lost lost credibility with his overall message. Yep. So, uh, you know, I, I, 
I mean, back when I used to do pen testing, if a website had one of those types of seals, yeah, that, that makes you just kind of, you know, hunker down a little bit more. It paints a target and says, ooh, this this will be a good one. Several years ago, there was a story, Larry, I don't know if you remember <laughs> it, where one of these trusted providers had some vulnerability in the code they put on everyone's website. Yeah. Did I get that right? Yeah. It was something like that. It right? was, that was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. But it was very <laughs> ironic they were putting this hacker. It wasn't, I won't say, I don't remember which one right, it, was. it was. I think I know who it was, but I don't want to say if it, if it was, that this, wasn't the case. This We're Safe label. Yeah, it yep. was on the website, but, but the code There have also been interesting information disclosures based on customer references from those companies, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which... Um, oh, then that was the other thing that we talked about with respect to this was if you tested a couple of the website that had that seal on them and found a vulnerability, the chances are that all of the other websites that had that seal also had that vulnerability because there was a gap in the way that they were automating yeah. the mm. testing of them. If you miss one thing yeah. on one site, site you're going to miss, miss it miss everywhere. Yeah. Well, uh, also, so what, it's, what it's is one it? of the things that's a, um, a little bit of an irritant to me um, in, in the pen testing industry because I, th I think there's a little bit of a uh, – uh, I'm trying to find a way of to say this, but we, we know that there's this t tendency for some companies to go out there and just sell an automated scan and call it the penetration test, uh, and you know, and 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 give the customer a you know a twenty thousand dollar invoice and walk away, um, and, and that does the industry that we're in a disservice because you know there are others of us that really put in a lot of effort to give a company a very thorough examination of the application, so instead of those seals. I would rather see a link that goes to a little paragraph that says our company has the following processes to assess this application on a periodic basis and just kind of describe it. That would be much more effective than a flashy little seal, but I don't know. I guess I live in a, some sort of obscure little bubble. you know. So, so what would happen if you were to create some sort of bot or crawler that looked for th those seals on websites and um, flagged when the seal disappeared huh. hmm. there, oh, there was somebody that did that yes yeah <laughs> yes yes at, at one point uh, in time they actually one of them had a list of of customers on their website bragging about who was using their seal mm -hmm. and when somebody would drop off of the list it was either because they didn't renew or they didn't pass and so there's an information leakage angle there that's hmm. kind of ugly um, but it, you know, it's, as long as it's got the seal, it's safe, right? I mean, that's that's like having the having your um, what do you call it, favicon, be a padlock, and that way you don't have to spend all that money on a cert for your website, right? Well, I think wait, also, wait, wait. But, I, I think but there is there is devil's advocate. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? If the seal disappears, maybe the company got more educated, got a thorough pen test, maybe, and said, maybe Man, the fuck these guys. Crap. Maybe yeah, they, they did, but a fair num but a fair number of them. Yeah, no, I don't know. Again, maybe I'm living in an idealistic yeah. world. Well, no, I think part of the philosophy of the seals too is like if you think about uh, you know most uh, suburban neighborhoods and and you, you buy your house and you got to get the home security system and you got to put the little sign on your front lawn or put the sticker in your window, with the belief that uh, you know if a if a burglar is is going through the neighborhood looking for which house to break into and they see that seal. They're more likely going to skip over that house just because they don't want to deal with it, and they're going to look for the house that doesn't have the seal. I always thought it'd be a great business to just sell the little stickers for a mythical company, and it wouldn't matter if you had any security. <laughs> I, and I remember Radio Shack used to sell them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because that would that be a deterrent ways, for the for the you know you know the ankle biters, the script kiddies, the the the, the casual hacker. I think part of the problem now, in what we've seen in the last year. Uh, a year and a half is that uh, you know this from the early days when it was you know uh, high school college kids that probably all of us 20 years ago that didn't have anything better to do uh, was just trying to see where where could we get uh, and and mm -hmm. what could we knock over for bragging rights or whatever there wasn't uh, financial gain there wasn't such an industry that was built up behind the hacking yeah so it was more of oh shit look what I did yeah yeah um, yeah, it was more bragging, bragging rights. Yeah, it was bragging yeah. rights. Um, so, but you know that I don't think it holds true anymore. That uh, you know, there's serious hackers out there, and you know, 20 years ago, you wouldn't maybe think of having the audacity of going after a company like Sony because you would assume that they would have, because of the size of the company, that they would have 
security countermeasures in place or at least the detection capability that you're going to get caught so don't even try yeah that's not true too. and yeah that's <laughs> oh. just not wait true sony anymore. got hacked yeah <laughs> again <laughs> again <laughs> by the north koreans or not or, or maybe insider uh, a Korean and insider. i did actually see the one north article I was, I was w- i was wondering if sony was responsible for that new movie interview which is the the story of the um, yes, the crew, the 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 interview the journalists show who are supposed to assassinate, assassinate Kim Kim, yes. Kim Jill. Kim yeah, Kim and, and so that was one of the theories. What is was retaliation, retaliation for making him look uh, stupid? Like uh, the mirror makes that dude look stupid. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> which, which, is, which is funny because I, I I mean I haven't seen the movie or anything like that, but I heard it's up w- on. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. On it's, it's on the, on the internet, internet, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, haven't, I haven't seen it, <laughs> um, but uh, we were, I was talking with, with someone about that, I think it was yesterday, that, yeah, it was uh, all along the lines that that was some of the theories that they uh, retaliated against Sony for that movie, f- mm-hmm. making Kim Jong-un look stupid and retaliation. Give him a drink for saying the, the name right. The problem is that Absolutely. they apparently didn't watch to the end of the movie mm. because... Allegedly, at the end of the, I haven't seen it. At the end of the movie, <laughs> spoiler alert: the uh, they, they <laughs> say Jack. that he, he's he's really a good guy. I don't want to kill him. I'm like <laughs> you, you watch the first, you, you watch the trailer, and you made some assumptions. Yep, I, I, yeah. it sounds like they have a little bit of first world problem there, right? Don't have the patience to watch the whole movie. Yeah. So. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, with that, we're gonna take a short break. Come back and wrap up the show. <laughs> Oh, we're back. Hey. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, no guest? No guest. Wow, that was quick. <laughs> this week. That was a quick That's break. That's what she said. I feel like it. <laughs> I'm just back again. Wow. You're back again? We probably yeah, could have like done more stories, too. Well, we're That was an interesting sidebar discussion we had while we were on the break, though. Oh, I think it was that very, was awesome. Yes, it was. It was. It was oh, the <laughs> whole discussion during the break. It's yeah. too bad you missed it. Yeah. It was... That was uh, an unrepeatable, the secrets. Re- unrepeatable moment. If it yep. weren't for NDAs, we could talk about it on the air. But <laughs> That's right. We can't. We yeah. can't. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks, everyone, for watching this edition of Security Weekly. Larry, take yeah. us out. Oh, already? Oh, man. I'm even out of drink. So uh, over and out. Shop.securityweekly.com. <laughs> Don't forget episode 400. <laughs> <laughs>